Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Real Talk, Real Tips. Today's video, I'm gonna talk about something that is common knowledge, but sadly isn't common practice, and that is how to be a pro with zero talent required. And what I mean by that is, all the things that are outside of actually playing your instrument that make you a professional. I'm basing this on the fact that if you get called for a gig or you get called to sub for someone, you are at least seen to be or you are musically talented enough to play the music. So I'm not talking about that part of it. I am talking about from the moment you get called for the gig up until and through and after the gig, what can you do to really be a professional? What does it mean to be a professional musician besides playing your part right? I think a lot of people struggle with this, not just professionals, but people coming up, high school, college kids, they, they, they say, what do I, what can I do to be better? And all they focus on is the music, but there are a ton of things that you can and should be doing outside of just the music to be considered a professional. Or if you wanna work in this industry and work in this business, there are a lot of things that I think you need to do to be successful. These are in no particular order. I'm just kind of shooting from the hip here and saying kind of what I feel. And I've talked to a few people recently, so it's just been on my mind. Now, one of the most important things about being a professional is showing up on time. I know this seems very, very, very obvious, but there are still people who think it's okay to show up late or show up right at the call time or right at the hit time and think it's fine to then waste other people's time at the beginning of the gig. You should get there early enough where you get yourself set up, everything you need to do, and also leave some extra time in case things go wrong. I can't tell you how many times there's been extra traffic. You get a flat tire, you get some other issue, and then you call the band leader saying, hey, I'm gonna be late because this thing happened. I think you should be leaving enough time for those things to happen. Now, under an extreme circumstance, sure, things may happen, but if you get a flat tire, you get pulled over and get a ticket, which has happened to me on the way to a gig, or anything else, you need to leave enough time for that. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is another thing that I think is absolutely ridiculous that I have to bring up, but that is attire, or what are you wearing? You should be wearing clothes that fit the gig. And what do I mean by fit the gig? Well. If you're playing at a wedding and they say it's a black tie wedding, you should be wearing a tuxedo or some type of a suit or dress or something that, that they approve of. If you're not sure, just ask. If you're playing a bar gig and you're playing covers of Led Zeppelin or something, sure, dress in that style. Wearing a suit there might look a little weird. Always dress to the gig that you're playing. And I think it's always good to maybe overdress a little bit. I've never gotten any flack really for overdressing a little bit, but I can see how people would care if you're underdressed. People are paying money to come see you play. You should show them that same respect back in taking yourself seriously on stage. Another thing, and this does have to relate to music a little bit, is if you get the music ahead of time, like you actually get charts ahead of time, or if they send you recordings of what's gonna be played on the gig or roughly what it's gonna sound like on the gig, please do your homework ahead of time and show up as prepared as possible. It is really unprofessional to me if I send you charts or somebody sends you charts and says, hey, we are going to be playing these specific tunes, look them over, especially that one, it's gonna be kinda tricky, and then you th either think, oh, I'm, I'm too good, I don't need to look over those charts, or you're like, ah, oh, I'm not getting paid enough for this, oh, I'm not gonna look them over, and then you screw it up on the gig. You know, if you feel like that is beneath you, then don't take the gig in the first place, okay? Just say, you know what, this isn't for me. I only like to just show up and, and sight read and if I mess it up, it doesn't matter or I only like to play my own music and that's fine, but don't accept a gig then when the band leader or whoever's in charge gives you something to prepare ahead of time, you don't do it. That's just really disrespectful in my opinion. Another one is one of my biggest pet peeves and it's why I started my whole Make Jazz Fun Again thing is your body language on the gig and on the bandstand, whatever the gig may be, fit the style of the gig. If you're in a big band and it's and it's swinging and people are playing solos and you're sitting there looking miserable, I could totally play better than him. Oh, jeez, is that a Coltrane lick? Oh, how outdated. Oh, did he play a blues lick that the audience liked? Oh, you're only supposed to play stuff that nobody knows anything about. Oh, did he move a little bit? Oh, you're supposed to stand there like a statue. Oh, Enjoy yourself. You're playing music. The audience will feed off it and they will also enjoy it. I cannot tell you how many times people have come up to me after gigs and they didn't mention the sweet 2-5 line I played or that tritone sub that I worked in there. What they said was, man, you looked like you were having so much fun up there. It looks like a blast. I loved it. I was having fun with you. 
Isn't that what it's about? We're trying to create a product and present a product. And it's not only about the intricacies of the music, but it's about the presentation. Sure, if you're in a recording studio and nobody can see you and you wanna lay on the floor and play, by all means, go ahead. But if you're on a stage in a certain situation where it would make sense, to interact with your fellow bandmates or interact with the audience or actually hoot and holler or cheer or smile, God forbid. Do that, do that. That will only enhance the listener's experience. Once again, if you are above that and you're like, no, I'm only all business about this gig and all I care about is playing my part, I don't care if the audience doesn't like me. Well, then you're part of the problem and you're part of the reason why people don't like jazz anymore. And you're part of the reason why everybody complains that nobody comes to my gig anymore and I can't make rent anymore because you're not actually enjoying yourself because you think it's beneath you to actually show a little emotion positively on the bandstand. Another thing is being flexible and being coachable. Once again, I can't tell you how many times I get somewhere and I'm ready to go and, and the band leader might say, "Ooh, I'm really sorry, but we're gonna have to change this up and take something away or add something here. And they, they say sorry as if, They've probably dealt with other people who have given them attitude for it. Listen, things happen. You want to change it. You have a vision. You change it. To me, being a professional is being ready for those curveballs and being able to overcome them. Like I said in the beginning, this has nothing to do with your actual musical talent and your ability to play the music. I'm assuming that you are talented enough for the gig and you can actually play the music. And trust me, there are a thousand other saxophone players right in this area that are probably way better than me. Okay, and that's fine and that you're always going to find that that's the case, you, you know, just because somebody gets a gig and they might not be as good at you at playing Coltrane changes or something doesn't mean you should just get down on them. Maybe you should say, hey, I wonder why they got that gig. Maybe they're more coachable. Maybe they said yes to more gigs. Maybe they answered quicker. Maybe they were more fun on the bandstand or maybe they just know different people and that happens and that's okay. But you can't get down on people who get gigs who might not be as good at their instrument as you because once you pass the minimum requirement musically for a gig, after that, it's all these other attributes that I'm talking about. The final thing is your interaction with your bandmates, with the band leader, and everybody else involved. And I don't just mean on the bandstand. I'm talking about beforehand, before the gig, right when you get to the venue, during the gig, during breaks, after the gig. Those types of things really go a long way. People remember relationships they have more than the actual performance. How many times have you played a concert and you might not remember every single little thing you played, but you remember a specific moment of an audience member really getting into your solo or clapping afterwards or someone telling you, man, I love your energy up here. It was, it was, it brought a whole new vibe to it. Those are the things that people really remember rather than the, the intricacies of it. Now, are the intri intricacies important? Yes, they are important, but if you have those as well as that other relationship and building relationships with people, I think it goes a really, really, really long way. One of these things can be, hey, leading up to the gig, maybe messaging the people, I'm really excited for tomorrow night, I'm really looking forward to it, then sharing it online or something like that. After the gig, saying how much you enjoyed playing with that person, how much you enjoyed the band, how much fun you had, stick around a little bit and actually talk to some people instead of just heading right for the door, where's my check, run out the door. Maybe the day after the gig or two days after, maybe send a message to the band leader or whoever hired you and thank them for giving you the opportunity to perform with them. There are a lot of other musicians they could have called and may have called before you, you don't know, but you can be thankful for the gig that you had. I know it means a lot to me when I hire someone, especially for the first time, and the day after they tell me how much fun they had and how much they enjoyed it. Because sometimes, you know, as a band leader, we're not sure if the band enjoys it, even if they're, you know, they're hyper-focused on the music, we're not sure if, the, we want band, members to enjoy the music. Just like when I'm a band member in someone's band, I, I like enjoying it and I know the band leaders want me to enjoy it as well. So if you put all those things together, it just creates a great experience and one that you can grow from and you can get more performances from and you know going into the next one, it's gonna be even better than before. I know this video is all over the place and I'm just rambling, but I just had all these ideas in my head and from talking to some people recently, talking to some students, talking to some colleagues, I just felt like I had to say some of these things and if you have any tips for other things that go into being a professional musician that are not related to actually playing the music, please let me know in the comments below. I know I only touched on a few things. There are a ton more that I can talk about, but I don't want this video to be 45 minutes long. So I hope this was somewhat helpful for you. And if you have any questions about it, please let me know. And, and I know for younger musicians, high school, college, and you're looking to get into the professional musical world, it's, sometimes it's a little scary place because there's no defined thing that you should be doing or things that you should be 
saying or places you should be going. So always just ask me if you have any questions. I'm always asking other people for help from, for me as well. It never stops, you never stop learning. So please browse my channel and subscribe. I have tons of different kinds of videos coming out new each week. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.